All right, so, so far this week, we went over chapter six on Monday. Yesterday, we went over some code examples from chapter five and from chapter six. We went through the miles per gallon JavaScript form validation example. Today, we're gonna go over the test, and for the rest of the period, will be lab. Monday, again, will be lab all period. Tuesday, we'll come in and take the written test first thing, and the rest of the period will be lab. And Wednesday will be the chapters five and six hands-on test. All right, so I'm going to do this a little bit differently. And what I mean is, what I want to show you in here, we're going to go over the test, but I'm going to kind of do it ass backwards in that what I want to do is I want to go over first the end of the test where I gave you those that file with the seven errors in it. All right, so these were the errors, and I think most people found them. But if you lost any kind of points on these, all right, so if you lost points, um, it's because you didn't tell me the type of error that it was. So I took off because not only were you supposed to identify the error, but explain the type of error that it was. All right, this first one here, this shouldn't have been less than or equal to, it should have been less than. All right, that's actually typically referred to as an off by one error. It is a logic error, but it's, that's what it's typically called because you're, you're trying to access an, an element that literally doesn't exist. All right. This second one, you called output totals, but we didn't pass the total gross. So there was, again, there, that should have been passed in. Again, you could call that a runtime error. Remember, with runtime errors, you don't find those until you run the program. All right. Some of these errors, you know, if, if you put something down, you could make a case it's a syntax error or it's a logic error, it's a syntax error or it's a runtime error, etc. And I get that. All right. The third one, notice we said LN here for the last name, so you should have returned LN and not FN because FN doesn't exist, so that was a syntax error. This one right here, we were doing the hours worked, but we weren't returning anything. So that was a runtime error because it was expecting a value to be returned and we weren't returning anything. All right. Next. I think I changed that. Oh, I, oh yeah. We, we passed in HW and PR, but I multiplied HW times PW. All right. Another runtime error. Here, we forgot to pass in the gross pay. So there should have been five parameters passed in. We only passed four here, whereas for the output individual information, we passed five in here. All right. And then finally, this last one, this was a logic error. All right. This should have been divided by instead of times. And I did mention this, you know, when you started going through this and you ran the stuff that was in here, so if I come in and I find this payroll array and I want to run it, well, pretty much, and I click this, okay, it's given me something, boom, boom, then it stops. So what you should have started doing was hitting F12, and that really would have walked you through just about all of it. Now, many people did well. Some people didn't do as well on that part. All right. Hopefully, though, just looking at it that way makes sense. And when you are doing your, um, when you're doing your test next week, you're hopefully now okay with the fact that if you have a problem, you know what to do to try to fix it. All right. All right. So, let's see. So let's talk about what we had to change for this particular test, okay? The first thing that we were supposed to change is we were supposed to add this constant in here called numcusts. Now, minus six, I think you, asked, it was asked, you were asked to make it five. It doesn't matter, all right? You know how easy that is to change, but the point is you were supposed to add that as a constant. You were also supposed to go into the HTML file and change the title here, all right, and you were supposed to save it in a certain way. All right. 
So then we came in here, and after we created numcusts, all right, I added first name and last name. You were also supposed to make all of these arrays. Some of you said equals new array. Some of you even said equals new array, and you put in the parentheses numcusts. Any of those ways was okay. Again, when you are doing this, this is the way I look at it. I used to write tests where I would tell people, do this, do this, do this, do this, do this. And I tell you exactly how to do it. And then everybody's test would be the same. And that's not a good thing. Because, you know, again, I've said this, this isn't a joke, this isn't funny. My wife will tell you there's already one too many Jeff Scotts in the world. And I don't want to, I don't want to turn you into clones of me. I want you to, to, to use your own mind, to use your own logic to solve problems. And if I keep pigeonholing you in there by telling you to do it this way, this way, this way, you know, I don't want to do that. All right. So, any questions on this, on what this was doing? All right. Then we were supposed to add a bunch of variables here. We were supposed to add a shortest, a tallest, a lightest, a heaviest, an average weight, and an average height. Now, you notice what I've done here? There's two ways of doing this. I'm going to show you both. First of all, notice what I did for shortest. I made it 97, which might sound weird. And for tallest, I made it zero, which might sound weird. But now I can be 100% assured that the first value that I read in will be shorter than that, and it'll be taller than that. Does that make sense? Because of the, the constants that I'm using are forcing me to enter a number for height that's between 12 and 96. So I'm saying again, does that make sense, what I did? There's another way of doing it, and I'll explain it when we get to that part of the code. Because some people use that, which was fine. Then I did the same thing here. Lightest became one pound more than the heaviest, and heaviest became one pound less than the lightest. I did it for the same reason. So these four things were put in like this, so I could be 100% assured that when I read in the first person's height and the first person's weight, it would become shortest, tallest for the height, and he lightest, heaviest for the weight. Mask it again. Does that make sense? Anybody have any questions on that? All right. Then these were just going to be the averages. Okay. Then you were supposed to come in and we were supposed to, I believe, now that I'm thinking about it, I may have, well, I'll have to look at that. You were supposed to use a for loop, all right? Because originally we had it in a while loop, right? In the lab, because we went over fours since then. So I went from zero to numcus. There's different ways that you could have done this, okay? But this is one way of doing it. Now, as far as what we're doing in here, so what am I doing? This should make sense that every single place in here that you're seeing LCV, that is this. That's that loop control variable. That should make sense to everyone. That loop control variable is a placeholder. So the first time we read a, the first person in, LCV is zero. Does that make sense to everybody? So we're going to pass zero, 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 and zero. So that's all the stuff for the first person. So for the first person, we'll input their first name, we'll input their last name, we'll input their height, we'll input their weight, we'll calculate their BMI, we'll calculate their BMI status, and then we'll display all of their information. Then when we get down to the bottom, it'll pop back up here, it'll add one to it, so it'll be one, which is still less than num costs. So we'll put another one in. Again, I'm asking, does that all make sense? Okay. So what are we doing in here? Well, some of you lost points because for the input first name, you were told to check and make sure, you were told to check and make sure that it wasn't blank. So if you, if you didn't make that blank check, you lost points. All right? That was the only validation you were asked to do. So this is my priming read, and here I'm checking to see whether or not it's empty. 
you could have used either a double equal or a triple equal. Remember the difference between them. Double equals is just a check for equality. Triple equals is called equality identity. So it's making sure that it's both the right value and the right data type. All right, so it's considered a cleaner way of doing it. So we're going to be stuck in here until we put in a first name that's not blank. Once it's not blank, we return it. So that line in 135 that says return first name, that's going to stuff that into right here. Does that make sense? Then we do the same thing with last name. Now, what I did with mine is I grabbed everything, and I mean everything, that was in here. Everything. All of it. Copy to the clipboard, pasted it in here, and changed first to last. That's all you got to do. It's the exact same logic. Now, sometimes people ask, they go, you know what? I got a question for you, Jeff. Would it have been possible that instead of having an input first name and an input last name, could we have just called had a, had a routine called input name and the first time pass it first and the next time pass it last? Yes, you could have. All right? Would that have been a better way to do it? You can make your own case as to whether or not it would have been. All right? So really, like I said, we could have done that and just had an input name. And then in here, this variable, we could have just called it n for name, for example. And, but we could have said, or we could have come in here and said this, pass in first name, pass in last name. And then we could have had that in as a parameter here. There's, it, it's a fine line where, some, you know, where should I write one routine and make it more generic, or should I write two routines? This is the way I'm looking at it. This is the whole routine right here. If I can fit that whole routine on one screen, that's a pretty good sized routine. In an ideal world, that's what you can do. I like it better as two routines. Not only that, if I decide later, and you know, I might, maybe I want to do something different with the first name as opposed to the last name. Now I can do that. If I make it one generic routine, then I got to rip it apart. Okay? And I don't think I want to do that if I don't have to. All right, so that was that stuff. The other stuff that was in here, the height, the weight, the BMI, and the BMI status, that was the same as the last program. Okay? Except we're working with an array now. But when you look in here, I didn't change anything. Height, validate it, pass it back. Weight, validate it, pass it back. Once you've got it, that was the formula. You were given the formula. I did it to fix, so it was already set to two decimal places. And then for the uh, for the status, same exact stuff we had before. Any any questions on any of that? Do people realize that when you call, for example, I'm just going to grab this one here. When you do this and you pass that in. Okay, sometimes people find that confusing. So let's let's pretend for a second. Jeff Scott 72 240. Okay? So let's just say that was what was put in there. So this is the same thing as though we said 72 240. Does that make sense? These are just placeholders. And every array element is just a regular variable. An array itself is known as a data structure. All right? But a data structure is just a collection of simple elementary or scalar data items. That's all it is. All right? So what was new? Well, first that display all, we had to make sure we also added into here first name and last name. So if you left that out, you lost points. Make sense? Part of your requirements. The way that I would take this test, if I were you, is the first thing I would do would be to read the entire test front to back. Everything. Even if you just skim it. Say, okay, what was in my last test that I can use here so I don't have to do a lot of rework? All right. I already told you for your next test, the one you'll take next Wednesday, a week from today, it'll be a BMI test. 
what I would do, again, you do what you want to do, but what I would do if I were you would be to open up this file when you're taking your next test and open up that uh, miles per gallon JS one that we did yesterday. I would have those both open because that miles per gallon thing is going to have the form so you can just copy that, do some manipulations, and boom, now it's your BMI form. But the logic is also in here. All right. So then once you displayed it, what was new was this stuff, <clears throat> shortest, where we passed in the height, tallest, where we passed in the height, lightest, where we passed in the weight, heaviest, where we passed in the weight. Does everybody understand? If you look up on the screen here, this routine here in line 88 and this routine here in line 92 are literally the same routine, except one will say less than and one will say greater than. Does that make sense? This routine right here in line 96 and this routine right here in line 100, they are the same routine, except this one will say less than, this one will say greater than. Does all that make sense? Because these are things that really should just stick in your mind. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. All right. So before we do the average and we display that stuff, let's forget about that for a second. So let's go down to here. All right. So you notice now that who's the shortest, who's the longest, who's the lightest, and who's the heaviest becomes short routines. Again, they're all 282. They're about 12 or 13 lines. All right. Now, if you look right here, again, notice I made it 97. Okay. And I could have actually, rather than do that, I shouldn't have used 97. If you look on the screen here, I shouldn't have used that. I should have used that. Or made that a constant or whatever. Okay? But that's fine. The way I did it, it works just fine. There's not a problem with it. So this goes from zero to the number I have. If it finds one, if the current one is shorter than the shortest, it becomes the new shortest. Okay? Now, please look on the screen because I want to show you something. This is what some of the people in here did, which is totally fine. Rather than saying S equals this, they did this. They said S equals height zero. So they made it equal to the first element. Why would you do that? Because now... you can start there. You see what I did? The way we did it before, the way we did it before, all right, was we had in here, it was equal to 97, and we started at zero. Now it's just one less check that we have to make. It, it's no big thing one way or the other. All right? But I do want to show you something. Let's go, I'm going to send it back to the way it was, because that's the way most people did it. But again, either way would have been okay. Let's pretend for a second, because this is a really important point, and that's why I want to show it to you. Let's pretend that we had a variable in here. I'm just making this up, var junk, and we're going to say it's equal to, I don't know. Again, you wouldn't normally do it this way, but let's just say numcusts times 60. Again, I'm just making that up. All right. Well, that's fine. So then if I came through here and I said this, less than junk. I Hopefully you'd all agree, that would work. It would run it a lot of times, but it would work. All right. But what I want to show you is this. What you never, ever, ever want to do is this. You never want to do that. Now imagine, imagine for a second that we were running through this loop a million times, okay? So let's just pretend in here we were doing it a million times. This would have to do the same exact calculation a million times. Now that's nothing for the computer, but it's wasting processor time. Here, if I put it in like this, now I'm doing the calculation once. The other way, I'm doing it every single time. So one thing you should never, ever do in here 
is a calculation. Because if you do that, you're making the system do more work than it has to do. And you should always strive, you know, and again, because I've heard people, I've, I've given this kind of lecture before where people will come in and they'll say, uh, you know, these computers, they work so fast anyway, there's no difference. But imagine, because this is the example I always tend to use, it's Amazon. And they're writing code because they're getting hit on literally probably millions of times per minute. And if we're doing that every time, it will eventually slow the system down. You don't have to take my word for it, but it will. All right. And I don't remember who it was. It might have been Colin. It might have been somebody else. But somebody asked, okay, that works fine, plus, plus I. But what if I do this? That actually runs slower internally in the machine. That runs slower than this does. I don't know why, but it just does. I think the reason why is when you do it this way, it has to figure out the value of I, then add 1 to it. And in doing it this way, it just adds 1. And it already has that value of I cached. All right. The worst way you could do it is like this. That will take the longest. All right. The second worst way you can do it is like that. So again, you should always strive when you're doing this to do it in the most, into the best way possible, for lack of better words. All right. Which again would be plus plus I. All right. And again, oops. So again, if height less than S, if height greater than T, I call it S for shortest, T for tallest. But again, it's the same routine. And in fact, you could go down and say, so is that pretty much. And that. Any questions on how you figure out the shortest? or the tallest, or the lightest, or the heaviest. To me, it made sense to do that when you were all done. We could have been keeping track of it as we were going through the array. Would you agree with that? As we were reading heights and weights in, we could have kept track of it that way. All right? But this way, everything's done. We can just whip through the, the, the whole array, and I, I think it'll end up working faster that way. All right, then we've got the average. That wasn't very hard. We had to figure out the total height. So this says loop through the heights array and add to my total number of heights. Once you get that, take that total, divide it by the number of customers. You know why I did this? Anybody have a clue as to why I did that? I, why I divided it by 1.0? I want my average height or my average weight to be two decimal places. If I leave that divided by 1.0 out, since I'm dividing an integer by an integer, it throws away the decimal portion. <clears throat> so if my average height, if I leave this out right here, and let's say my total height happens to be, I don't know, I'm going to make this up, 297, and my number of customers is 10. Well, when I do the math, it's 29.7. But since I'm not dividing it, since I'm doing an integer divided by an integer, it throws that out and returns 29. All right. That's not really reflective. But doing it by the 1.0, now it'll give me 29.90. That's why I did it that way. Again, did you have to do that? No. But, there, you know, there's a thing of, you know, writing code the way that it should be written. Now, if you didn't do that, I wouldn't have taken off for it. But it's one of those things I'm trying to you know, impart whatever wisdom I do have to you. All right? And again, you'll notice when we come in here, the weight one is exactly the same. We add up our weights, we divide it by number of customers. Boom. That's that. Then when we were all done, this is how I did it again. I created a, a string for my heading and a string for everything else. And then I did a document.write on it. 
Here's a warning for you. You won't be doing a document dot right on your next test. You'll be using <clears throat> you'll be using the DOM to write that stuff out. So if you're still confused on how to do that, take a look at the exercises, take a look at the, um, the what you call it, the uh, W3Schools tutorial on the DOM that we went over, or whatever. All right? But that's pretty much it. Anybody have any questions? Yes, sir. Did you have the average Yes. find it. Yeah. Either one? Any other questions? Took a lot less time than I thought it would. Yes, sir. Um, he, he's Matthew or Matthew. Christopher is retaking it. So when you come in on Monday, yeah, and I will look over everybody's because a couple of you asked. You said, "Why'd you take off for this and that?" And I will do that, and you will get it back. You will get it back on Monday. All right. Any other questions on this? Because the rest of the period is yours. All right? Again, if you're struggling with any of this DOM stuff, or you're struggling with any of the, uh, the form validation stuff, I would suggest for the DOM stuff that you go through that tutorial. There are even tutorials online for form validation. All right? But especially the DOM stuff. That's, you're not going to have to do a lot of code for your next test. You're going to have to do a lot of manipulation using the DOM. All right, That's a warning, for lack of better words, because you've already done all of these calculations. Hell, my program is up to 425 lines, but that's with a boatload of, uh, that's with a boatload of comments and other stuff in there. All right. Last call. Any questions? Yeah. Any questions? All right, then the rest of the period is yours. I will keep it up there, but I'm just going to take this, and I'm going to uh, pause right now. I'm unpausing this because I'm going to show you very quickly, and I'll just have screenshots there if anybody ever wants to look at it. So this was the variable that was added right there. This is the same stuff we had in the last program, so there's nothing new there. This was how we came in and we added the arrays, including the brand new first name and last name. These are the variables that you were told to add for this one. Shortest, tallest, lightest, heaviest, average height, and average weight. Again, we were told to take main and put it into a for loop as opposed to a while loop. This was our first name input, last name input, height input, weight input, BMI calculation, BMI status calculation, and the display all info. These were the calls to our shortest, tallest, heaviest, lightest, and heaviest. All right, we passed the height in for the shortest and tallest. We passed the weight in for the lightest and heaviest. These were our two averages, average height, so we had to pass in the height, average weight, so we had to pass in the weight. All right. This was displaying everything when we got all done. This was inputting our first name, and again, you needed to put that check in there. Check. This is our validation check. The last name was exactly the same, except instead of validating the first name, we were validating the last name. 
the height did not change from the previous iteration that we had. The weight did not change from the previous iteration that we had. The BMI calculation had not changed from the previous iteration. The status had not changed since the previous iteration. The display, what was new was we had to add first name and last name. But other than that, other than these two lines, everything else was from the last one. Here was our shortest. Again, as I mentioned in class, there were two ways of doing this. All right, I'm sure now when I come through here the first time through, this will become the shortest, and then we'll measure each one against that one. Same thing for the tallest. These variables are just throwaway variables. I said S for shortest, T for tallest, L for lightest, and, well, it should have been double H, but that's fine, W for heaviest. All right, then our averages, which again, hopefully were pretty straightforward as far as what you had to do. Again, I did that divide by 1.0 to make sure that I would retain the decimal portion. Same thing with the weight. These two routines are exactly the same, except this one, I'm, well, I'm working with the height, and with this one, I'm working with the weight then display everything at the end. And that's it.